You're right, guys. So, uh, in my last video, I was talking about uh, the twenty uh, around the twenty nine twenty eight area um, as a very very interesting area. On top of that, probably somewhere just below that, if we do get some sort of uh, stop punt, so probably maybe down to possibly like the twenty five areas. Um, that prices could go right again. Nobody knows. No one has any idea. It could go high. Could go lower. Um, I'm not looking at this as far as price um, to try to forecast where price is going to go. Um, I'm just saying that you know, if prices do come down here, then what I probably expect to happen is you know some sort of manipulation because ultimately. Um, the buyers, and I say manipulation, but um, it's not really a manipulation from the perspective of the institutions and market makers because this is their business model, right? This is what they, um, this is what they, they're doing. We might look at it like it's a manipulation, but they just, you know, search for the liquidity. But to understand that, obviously, you got to watch uh, my last video. Now, um, just a quick, simple thing. I'm not, again, I'm not really driven by technical analysis, but for those of you who are. Um, driven by technical analysis, uh, you know, I'm definitely more fundamentally driven and just use technical analysis uh, to, to look for, you know, the best kind of buying opportunities potentially. So um, there's confluence in and around just 20, between this 29 and 25 area. And one of the confluences, I guess, technical analysis wise is that uh, is, a, is a Fibonacci retracement. Now, Fibonacci retracement, in case you don't know, is just basically, is, is like taking, um, it offers you discounts, right? Or it say offers you, but it, it, it indicates where potential pullback discounts are. So um, let's say, for example, we know instinctively that, you know, at one point, um, you know, this, I shall do it from here. Let's say, for example, this was a definite bargain as prices, you know, come all the way up here, yeah? So back in April, the, you know, the, the 13th, 14th, um, we would have looked at this area as being one of those areas where you're like, you know what, prices went, you know, shot up from here, you know, and uh, this was basically an expensive race to pull back. Now, all Fibonacci is is just their, their ratios that occur throughout uh, nature and things like that, um, uh, discovered by Mr. Fibonacci, I guess. And, um, you know, one of them is the 38.2% and the other one is the 61.8%. So that's 61.8% Fib, right? And the 382 You can just kind of Google Fibonacci and Fibonacci retracements and things like that. So, um, traders generally tend to use this uh, Fibonacci retracement in their um, in their trading, right? To to to, to really, I don't necessarily understand it, but it's basically just giving you a discount or or indicating where the discount is if you ex expect or you, you assume that this is a bargain area and this is an expensive area. Yeah, so you're looking for basically a pullback. Yeah, so um, that's all Fibonacci is. Um, so this is basically a 61.8% discount from the absolute highs, of course, um, and this would be the absolute bargain. So um, again, we can see that prices, you know, did what it's supposed to do. Now, um, one of the things that I guess traders generally don't do is look at things historically. So from a historical perspective, um, uh, you've got you, you you kind of have to look at the highs and the lows, right? So. Um, <clears throat> You know, with the, with the backdrop of institutions are thinking, uh, not are thinking, but they're looking to obviously buy into not necessarily just Bitcoin. Obviously, Bitcoin is the flagship for crypto at the moment. Doesn't mean it's going to be like that in the next, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. But it is the flagship for crypto. So um, at the moment, you know, the institutions are trying to, you know, set up um and get permission for regulation for you know Bitcoin, Bitcoin ETFs, and crypto in general. But Bitcoin is the is the is, is the market leader, I guess, or the the crypto with the biggest market share in the in the total market cap. So, with that being said, um, analyzing Bitcoin is just uh, you know something uh, that we can do um, as and as a reflection of probably the whole market cap because you've got the total market cap which is here um, that we use, but I'm just analyzing Bitcoin as far as Bitcoin levels. Now, um, again, if we take, going back to Fibonacci, if we take um, the whole market, 
right? And why would really we take the whole market? Well, there's lots of institutions that missed out on you know this move and, and buying Bitcoin from pretty much zero, right? So they're probably now looking, you know, they were skeptics, they were, you know, naysayers and all that kind of stuff and saying, no, 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 you know, Bitcoin is a scam, Bitcoin is a scam, Bitcoin doesn't work, Bitcoin ain't gonna work, da 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 da. Now they're looking at Bitcoin, the narrative has changed, Bitcoin is supposed to be a store of value, and I use the word supposed to be. Um, no one really knows yet what it is, but that's the narrative that, you know, is being peddled. So with that being said, um, there are uh, traders and investors and hedge funds and sovereign wealth funds that are going to look to add Bitcoin to their portfolio into the going going forward, right? So because now crypto can't be denied, but again, they missed out on the last you know ten years of of, of, of eleven years of, of Bitcoin. Um, or is it 12 years, something like that, when Bitcoin was made in 2008, 2009 by Satoshi, but they missed out on all of that, and now they're, you know, seeing the light, yeah, they're seeing the light that potentially, you know, Bitcoin could go to 100,000, uh, maybe 200,000 within the next, you know, 10 years, so there's lots of potential upside, but they don't want to buy at highs, they're not buying at highs, these are the smart money, they, they, they're smart money for a reason, they don't buy at high and sell at lows, they buy low and sell high, so if they've missed out on all of this move and they're looking for, you know, saying that they want a Bitcoin ETF, you know, there's, um, you know, regulation coming, they want to get into crypto, um, you know, wallets, wallet usage as far as all wallet creation uh, for for various um, cryptos are, are on the rise, you know, you've got many you know exchanges popping up now from um you know i mean even coinbase is on is on um, is in the stock market right so you know they ipo so there's it's not it's not some fringe niche um you know thing that it was maybe back in you know 2014 2015 2016 it's you know we've got the metaverse coming as well so that all ties in um to one sec yeah so that all ties in to um to crypto expanding, you know, blockchain, and, you know, believing in the technology. So, anyways, so the financial institutions that want to get in on Bitcoin now and invest that missed out on the last, you know, ten years, they want to buy for a bargain price or a discount at least, right? They could buy. I don't know if it would, if it would ever come down to, you know, uh, four thousand again, but anything's possible. But um, from the perspective of a discount, where is a really good discount? So between a high and a low or a low and a high, um, generally, you know, 50% is fair value. That right? is what you would call fair value, 50% of a high and a low. <clears throat> would be somewhere around, you know, here. Yeah, so it's touched kind of fair value. So that makes sense, all the sense in the world to start to buy in and around this area, start to at least scale in. but. As I spoke about in you know my previous video, you know um, banks just can't you know if they got like let's say for example they've got and it's not just banks but you know there's loads of financial institutions looking to buy Bitcoin scaling the ones that can the ones that are not being held back by regulation they want to start buying um, and scaling in and there needs to be enough liquidity and there needs to be enough sell orders in order for you know the the smart money to buy and if there's not enough sell orders in the market then um, uh, the financial institutions have to scale in slowly. Um, it's called it's called the iceberg order, and they just basically just buy bit by bit by bit over time. Because again, unlike retail traders and investors who want to get rich quick, these guys are in it for the next you know for the long term. So, anyways, where's a better value than fifty percent fair value? Better uh, a much better um, price would be sixty one point eight percent. You know. Fib, um, <clears throat> I'll say fib, but a, but a retracement, yeah, and actually that lines up really nicely, very very nicely, with um, the, the the area that I was um, talking about with regards to um, the uh, my, my my second video, uh, we'll say second video, but the last video that I made, which was basically Bitcoin coming down. To beyond and I shouldn't have deleted that um, Bitcoin coming down to around the 25k or somewhere in and around that area right because again just getting rid of this stuff yeah we've got 
you know, that level there, which has been touched several times, it's no longer seen as a bargain because there's been too many buys, too many touches at that point. And then again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, prices could obviously bounce from there, right? Of course it could even go straight to the, to the upside because none of us know whether that's going to be seen as a bargain by, you know, hundreds of thousands of potentially millions of, of, of you know, uh, investors around the globe saying that that price is, is going to be it but i have a feeling that prices may come just beyond that 25 so that it snatches up all the liquidity below the market and then comes down and that lines up really with the six, uh, 26 thousand uh, uh fibonacci um uh, uh retracement which is going to be a very nice discount for the institutions so um <clears throat> so yeah just something to think about and something to uh, um, consider, you know, when buying, of course, uh, like I said, nobody knows. So the best thing that well, the thing that I'm doing, I can say, is just cost averaging down, right? You just cost average down because ultimately, and I'm not, I'm not buying Bitcoin, I'm just cost averaging on other projects. But, um, you know, cost average, cost average, cost average, you know, as you, you know, come down. Um, and again, try to, if you can, get heavier, <clears throat> Uh, I'm getting heavier as I'm go as prices are coming down, right? Because it makes sense. That's how the institutions play it as well. They buy heavier, um, or they increase their position size as prices, uh, you know, go lower. So they buy more for cheaper. So from that perspective, um, it's 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 you know that the Fibonacci retracement, you know, from the high to, from the absolute low to the ultimate highs make all the sense in the world for prices to come down here, right? And also as well, hit that, you know, Fibonacci retracement. Also as well, just from um, the perspective of, of price and what price generally tends to do, and I say generally or typically, but when you get like a, a, a big run up, right? So let's say for example, you have starting from <clears throat> May 2020, yeah? You've had this run where of price, where prices have not pulled back to any significant degree, yeah? pulled back, pulled back, and then it kind of pulled back slightly to maybe about fair value. So let me explain what I mean by that is <clears throat> since March 2020, right, if we drag, if we drag the, um, the Fibonacci tool and zoom in a bit, right, prices generally will at some point in time, it could take a year, it could take two years, it could take three years, 10 years, who knows, but eventually prices will in a, in a move up will eventually start to come back to um these areas here they will always have to pull back um because again we know understand about you know liquidity market makers etc so if you look at the low of of march 2020 which interestingly was you know around covid right this is the, when when we were in the the, the midst of the lockdown etc and, and bitcoin went down to three thousand eight hundred so just let's say four thousand dollars <throat> now since then we've had um you know uh, uh you know prices just basically make their way higher so as i said prices generally will revert back to the mean yeah it's something called mean reversion in 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 finance theory a reversion to the mean and mean being fair value but also as well um you know from what i've seen is that prices generally will come back to their 61.8 percent you know fibonacci as well now if you keep dragging prices higher right prices Let's see how many times. Remember, this is a bargain area at the moment, yeah? And this is an, the current expensive area. Remember, we don't know what's coming on into the future. Let's just pretend we didn't know what's going on into the future. <clears throat> so eventually, price has to kind of pull back to its 38.2, first of all, because that's going to be the first level. So where does when does price pull back to its 38.2? Right, we keep go dragging this high up keep going higher doesn't pull back remember like as it's going higher and higher it hasn't pulled back to touch this 38.2 so um we keep dragging it higher keep going higher keep going higher and then it kind of uh, difficult to tell to be fair because it could have went higher then lower then higher but let's just assume that it just literally you know it still didn't really touch that 38.2 percent fib anyway um so there was no there was there was a discount, but not necessarily much of a discount. As you put it higher, prices still haven't come back to that 38.2%. This is probably maybe now up to a year later. So a year later, 
we still haven't pulled back to that 38.2. So anyone who missed out on this run all the way higher didn't get a chance to buy for a little bit of a discount, a 38 you know, percent discount until um, May 2021. Um, and then <clears throat> eventually we come down, but we don't, again, we don't hit the 61.8% fib, right? So we you know that's the expensive area, yeah? And traders are literally now looking for a bit of a discount, but they they got the discount, but not necessarily down to the uh, to the to, to the Fibonacci uh, level. And then you get you know prices actually move, say the sixty one point eight percent Fibonacci level. Then you get that move there, and prices you know go go higher, expensive. And now anyone who wanted that sixty one point eight percent Fibonacci uh, discount. Um, you know, has a chance, of course, you have to kind of drag this a bit lower because, you know, from here to here, there, that makes all the sense in the world for that to um, also line up as well, right? So then there's going to be lots of traders looking at that area for, for, for buyers. But I think if you drag this back even more from the beginning, as I said, there was, there's was there been financial institutions that wanted to get in from zero and uh, that would represent the ultimate discount. Of course, the 30,000 area, um, you know, is a nice area to look for buyers um, and investment opportunities if you're investing in Bitcoin. But I do think the uh, it could potentially go lower before it goes higher to, to around that maybe 26, possibly the, the 25 area. If it goes below that, then obviously um, it is what it is, right? No one, no one, nobody knows, right? No one knows what's going to happen. It just represents either you know an even bigger discount for. The, um, for the financial institutions, because again, they believe they believe that um, prices should be somewhere up here. They wouldn't be trying to set up Bitcoin ETFs or you know um, <clears throat> applying uh, for Bitcoin ETFs for their clients. You know, um, BlackRock, who you know uh, uh, who have ten trillion dollars um, under management, assets under management, uh, applying for a Bitcoin ETF. They wouldn't do that if. Um, they believe that you know the the, the high of Bitcoin was uh, was like seventy thousand or sixty nine thousand. So um, again, for their clients and in preparation for a higher Bitcoin, they're looking to potentially scale. And I'm not saying that they that they're buying or whatever it is. I have no idea about the regulations. What they can or can't do. But the smart money, yeah, whether they're doing it personally for a business, whether they're regulated or not, are looking at this area here as an absolute discount a nice discount anyway obviously the zero would be the absolute bargain right because again you have to understand that price yeah is not correlated uh not always correlated to value oh, to value right it's not always correlated to value it's the reason why things can be um you know undervalued or overvalued or can be cheap or expensive just because price is going down doesn't mean that that's the value of that asset the value of the asset can can be you know a bargain price undervalued yeah can be undervalued, yeah, at this price because fundamentally we understand what you know um, uh, value is, right? So um, price doesn't always isn't always a reflection of value. So from that perspective, you know that level. I think this this twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty down to the twenty five area is going to be very interesting, very 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 interesting um, to watch. Will it? How long will it get down there? What will it take for it to get down there? Who knows if it will even get down there at all. Um, this year, next year, who knows? But just know that the the, the, the area is a nice area, um, uh, and and a very very watched area, and it's going to be um, you know an area of, of very very high activity. So um, so yeah, that's pretty much my analysis, and um, and yeah, until the next until the next video.